Aloha Bras has it, man. So are you a new healer that wants to be useful in PvP? Hopefully this video helps you out and provides some guidance, right? especially for the newbies. Now I have to add this disclaimer, this video is not a video showing you how to build your character. It's more of a video trying to drill key general concepts into your head to being an effective PvP healer. And hopefully after watching this video, some of these key things stay with you and help you in your PvP healing endeavors. Remember, you're a commodity that's very valuable to a good team. And you probably also suck at DPS, you know, like me, so that's that's probably why you're doing this, let's be honest, right? By the end of the video, my intention is that you absorb three key points in your head. In terms of importance, they are also ranked accordingly. Staying alive is number one in terms of importance because a healer is only useful if it's alive, right? A dead healer is a useless healer. Same with any other character. Point two is to heal, heal, and heal because that is your role on the squad. Heal and keep your teammates alive so everyone can play the objective. And last, buffing your team and providing resources. All right, so let's start with key point one, which is staying alive. Now this seems like a very simple and obvious statement, just don't die. While that is definitely true, the next question is, how do I do that? Constantly getting zerged and mobbed by enemies, how the hell are you supposed to stay alive? Everyone with common sense targets the healer. So, as a healer, you should always strive to be the tankiest player on the battlefield. That means having extremely high health, you know, well over 25k and, you know, sometimes even closer to 30k. Some Sometimes you'll even see people with 35k unbuffed, right? High health is good. It also means having the highest resistances on the field, above the supposed cap of 33k or around the cap of 33k. I typically run with 30k and that's usually enough and that is unbuffed, right? Which means you'll need to experiment with various heavy armors on a Magicka dominant build, which is unconventional, but for PvP, you want to have that. And also, it means having over 2,000 or 2k critical resistances, which means possibly having to change the traits of your armors to impenetrable to get the desired 2k. Now, you should be aware of your surroundings when, you know, you have to possibly run away or hide from enemies when you're becoming overwhelmed with attacks. Know how to traverse your terrain so it becomes more difficult for enemies to chase you. Switch to a backbard with a sword and shield and block when needed, right? Sometimes you'll see a healer become vampires for the elusive mist skill, which allows a player to become briefly invisible, which greatly helps you in disappearing and running away from the enemy. Now believe me when I say this, if you go into Battlegrounds or Cyrodiil in your regular PVM gear, you will die in a matter of seconds, right? It doesn't matter how good you are. Players in ESO tend to figure out the meta very quickly and know the most efficient way of killing the opposition because they have the best possible gear. Unless you are highly skilled with an ability to anticipate every move, it's not recommended to heal in PvP in all light armor that provide little to no resistances. Most of the time, it's a combination of heavy. So definitely keep that in mind. Also, final point for staying alive, use your potions, right? You probably have stacks of Tri-Crown Restoration potions in your inventory, you know, from collecting them from daily rewards and stuff. Use the hell out of them, right? A lot of the time, one potion is the deciding factor between life and death. Key point two, heal, heal, and heal. Seems obvious, right? The role is in the name. However, this can prove to be extremely difficult if you're not aware of how to pace yourself and be efficient with your resources while casting. First off, you should always strive to have a high Magicka sustain, otherwise known as Magicka recovery. Very rarely will you see PvP healers have less than 2k Magicka recovery. A lot of the times, it's closer to 3k. Make sure your Mundus Stone is always the Achanok, the one that adds to Magicka recovery. Magicka sustain is also improved and accompanied by using heavy attacks with the restoration staff. Knowing when to heavy attack with your restoration staff, keeping your resources full, and it allows you a larger buffer of Magicka expensive burst healing when needed. This leads to the next point, types of healing to consider. Now typically in most games that have healers, there are two types of healing, burst, and heal over time or hot. 
Now, Burst is usually more expensive in Magicka, but can heal a very large amount. Hot is usually cheaper in Magicka, but heals a small amount over a longer period of time. As a healer, you should always have your Hots on your team, and then casting powerful Burst heals when the enemy starts hitting too hard. So, you know, your Hots can't sustain your team's health anymore, but at least they're on the ground, so when you need to Burst, you won't have to Burst as much, if that makes any sense. This way usually provides the maximum amount of healing whilst being most efficient with your resources. Final point is team buffing and providing resources. I'm not going to spend too much time explaining this one. It's real nice when you can provide your team's buffs and resources, but like I can tell you right now when the fight gets real hot, you know, a lot of the time your team won't even notice the resources you're trying to restore for them because they're trying to calm their way into killing most amount of enemies as possible. I say they won't notice because a lot of resource restoring skills typically require manual activation on the part of the team and most of them don't take advantage of it when there are multiple enemies trying to go for them. They're doing everything they can to stay alive and so are you. Right? Now in terms of buffs, players typically buff themselves before heading into battle. It's usually their responsibility. So it is not typically required on the part of the healer unless discussed beforehand with an organized team. If anything, if you're going to buff your team, always make sure you're doing it before heading into battle. But don't ever trade high healing for a small percentage buff to your team You know, while in battle. It's not necessary. Only buff and provide resources if you are absolutely certain you can without interrupting your high healing. This is typically... This, this part is really more for experienced PvP healers and organized teams. Like myself, I'm, I'm very used to giving buffs now and providing resources just because I have a lot more experience and I know how my rotation works and I know how to be efficient with, with my resources. But as a new healer, you know, don't even, don't worry about it too much, right? At least not yet. Perfect the first two before you get into three, right? I will, however, say this. If you have access to a good damage shield that your team can benefit from, use it when time permits, right? Good damage shield acts similarly to increasing max health, albeit usually short-lived. It can mean the difference between life and death at times. Now this section is obviously up for debate, as there are seasoned veterans out there who claim their build is the best for optimal PvP healing, right? However, if you are a noob, like the video suggests, the top two classes for healing would be the Templar and Warden. These are the two classes that have separate skill trees dedicated for team healing, whereas the other classes do not, or not really. They might have one skill in a particular tree that can heal, right? So here we have the Templar, with the Restoring Light skill tree, right, which is their healing tree, and the Warden with the Green Balance skill tree, which is their healing tree. I'm not saying the other classes you know, wouldn't be good for healing. A Sorceress and a Necromancer definitely has its uses in smaller scale PvP healing situations. I would just say their learning curve and difficulty to use is a little higher. Right? I personally enjoy the Sorceress healer in small scale PvP situations like Battlegrounds, but their utility is you know, a lot less in large-scale situations like Cyrodiil and Imperial City. Alright, and here I'm just going to show you some of the gear sets for PvP, or some of the best ones to use, or the ones that I personally like using. This is not an exhaustive list by any means, just some of the suggestions that I think that might help you out. But of course, you know, there's different situations require different gear sets, and some of the gear sets that might not even be traditionally for healers could be used, right? Like high defensive sets or even tank sets. So here on this page, we have uh, on the top left, Robes of Transmutation, which is my personal favorite. That critical resistance that you grant to your teammates for five seconds is just so invaluable. It makes everybody tankier, so it makes it really difficult for the enemy to critical anybody on your team. And then you got Gossamer, Meritorious Service, and Winter's Respite. I used to use Winter's Respite. Not anymore. But yeah, it's a pretty decent set. And then on this next page are the six healer monster helms that people use. I personally like Earthcore because of the extremely high healing. Uh, the only problem with that one is it's, it's a very long cooldown. So sometimes that can be a problem. And then the other five, you know, they're... Well, the, the the last four are easy to get, uh, but the, the the second one is actually quite difficult. 
So it's up to you on which one you, you like to use. I like to use Earth Core personally, but it's just a personal preference, right? There's no wrong answer here. Choose what you like. Experiment with all the helmets you know, and see what suits your playstyle. So that basically concludes this video. Um, I hope most of you, especially the newer players, kind of got you know the key roles that you have as a PvP healer, which is to stay alive, heal, and then provide your team buffs and resources. If there's anything you're going to take out of the video today in the 10 minutes of watching, please let it be that, right? Because that's very important. Once you have that ingrained in your head, it actually becomes a little easier uh, to heal in PvP. A lot less overwhelming, you know, despite always getting zerged and mobbed. So here I have a gameplay of me in Battlegrounds playing Deathmatch. Now, when you're playing Deathmatch, you gotta understand uh, the importance of you on the field or the battlefield is not shown in the scoreboard, okay? Yeah, you're not gonna get the highest score in Deathmatch unless you're healing and really proficient at DPS. Here, you just wanna keep as many people alive as long as possible so they can kill others. However, when you take a PvP healer, you know, that's relatively well built, you're typically going to get the top score in the other modes in Battlegrounds, like Chaos Ball and Capture the Flag, Domination, or that Relic game or whatever. Like, you're typically going to get the top score. So, just be wary of that. And in, in Cyrodiil, your, your importance is even greater because, you know, you're healing large groups of enemies. So, mahalo so much for tuning in, guys. I uh, really do appreciate the support, as always. You guys spoil the hell out of me. I do not expect... I never expect having any views on my channel. Like, I'm, I'm happy if I can get a few dozen. So, when it exceeds a few dozen, I am extremely ecstatic. So, take it easy. Please like and subscribe if you found the video helpful. Um, take it easy. Stay safe, guys.